So let's start off by taking a look at SQL Server Management Studio. It's a tool that SQL Server administrators know very well. Obviously runs on Windows, so I'm running Windows here. I am going to connect to my SQL Server cluster, which is running on the virtual address SQL.ag1. Now I say virtual address because this is the floating IP address that moves between SQL servers as one of them becomes the primary. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And as you can see, you can see this SQL server. You can see the databases that are on this SQL server, including AdventureWorks, which will be our example for the day. You can see that we have always on availability groups and our group is called AG1. When we look at the availability replicas, we see that SQL2 is the primary. So that's probably what we're connected to now. So I'm gonna go ahead and load a query and we'll just take a look. Here we go. We'll just do a quick query of the Adventures Works database and we'll also print out the server name. Sure enough, we're on SQL2. Now, another thing that we can look at is how we administer this system in a Linux environment. Now, usually you think of a Linux environment and you think of a command line, but in fact, Red Hat Enterprise Linux does have a web console, which you can use to perform most administrative tasks. And through that web console, when you enter in, you see an overview. That overview right now is telling me that I'm not connected to insights. So that might be something that I would like to rectify uh, in terms of system health. It also is, telling me that my memory usage is, well, kind of high. So I might want to look at what might be consuming memory on my virtual machine. I can view graphs that show uh, utilization trends on the system. I can configure Active Directory, so I can join an Active Directory domain for the system. Um, there are separate commands to um, within the SQL Server to join that domain to SQL Server and to a SQL Server principal. Um, but this will connect me to Active Directory and, and set up my system so that my logins will work. Um, I can go over and take a look at my logs. I might have some issues, for example, with say the AG cluster service, which is the SQL Server clustering service. And sure enough, I see that I had problems with my SQL Server cluster not too long ago, um, but those problems have been resolved, so. I'm not concerned. I can look at my storage, see how my storage utilization is being used. I can take a look at my networking and pay attention to sends and receives on my network. I can look at accounts. I can manage my services. See, I see, for example, here that the SQL Server engine is running. I can uh, perform diagnostic reporting, which is useful for if I ever have to work with a support organization. Kernel dumps, also useful for support. I can administer my secure Linux, my SE Linux environment. Um, and this is telling me that there are certain errors that I'm seeing with SE Linux that I can go and resolve. Um, so there's quite a bit of interface here that I can take advantage of. And not just for managing the OS itself, but I also mentioned before high availability. And SQL Server high availability is, of course, managed through the availability group that we already looked at. But for that availability group to automatically fail over, it needs to take advantage of the operating system clustering system. And in this case, that system is provided by the Red Hat High Availability add-on, which uses Pacemaker. And you can see here a graphical tool that shows me the health of my cluster. I can look at the individual members of my cluster. And I can do all of this. We can see that um, the virtual IP address I told you about is running on SQL 2. I can do all of this without ever having data command line. So yes, the Linux command line is a great tool to be able to go to, but you don't necessarily need it as a SQL Server administrator. You're not gonna be hitting the command line all the time. And I'm certainly happy to show you a failover. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Um, We'll go ahead and log in to SQL 2. Just 
Oops, our demo system. Okay, and we'll shut it down by surprise. And SQL 2 is down. What happens when SQL 2 goes down? Well, of course, the availability uh, site is going to go down. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Um, we are actually connected to SQL 1. And as I said, SQL 2 is now down. Um, SQL 1 is active, and SQL is active. And if we look at the managed cluster, OK, and we are running, but our status is currently unknown for SQL 2. So let's go ahead and connect to or perform this query again. And sure enough, this time you see that the server is SQL 1. Pretty much the same kind of thing as you see on when running SQL Server on Windows. But as you see here, you're running on Linux.